All right, while we're waiting for uh, Jim to return, um, Ted has um, uh, spent a lot of time on trying to get a section for the uh, chief of police done. Uh, we have approximately an hour, uh, and it'd be nice if we can get through this, but again, we don't want to rush something and possibly miss something. So uh, let's try to give it our fullest attention and go through with it. So, Ted, you want to go ahead and start? What I'd like to do is go through is try to do this rather than section by section, as many as I think we can, we can probably deal with at one time. Having said that, these first couple I know people have, have concerns with. So, um, the, the paper that you have in front of you has no title, but the uh, article title is Chief of Police, not City Marshal, like the first one I asked people to some folks to proofread. Um, in the uh, first session uh, for eligibility election and term, uh, subsection A, eligibility for office, number one, candidates for Chief of Police shall have established primary residency in the city for at least two years, immediately preceding the election. The Chief of Police shall be a qualified voter of the city and shall remain a primary resident and qualified voter of the city during the entirety of their term. The, uh, the only thing I want to say there is that there was, I originally had one year in there and uh, a lot of the folks proofreading it were, were kind of split about whether or not one or two years was appropriate. Um, I put two years in there, but as you go through the rest of the eligibility factors here, one of our former chiefs of police, who was one of the proofreaders, pointed out that unlike most elective offices, there are some significant qualification requirements that specifically describe being able to do this particular job. Um, he remarked that if you if you set it in two years, you severely limit the residents' ability to make choices under circumstances where somebody that wants to do this job is going to have to, to, uh, to look two or three years ahead to move into the city if there are policemen somewhere else under a residency requirement, for instance, Kansas City. Um, and, and it might not only hamper your, your list of choices, but it could also limit the quality of your candidates. Um, so I put in two years in here, but I offer up to you that, that um, some of the experience from our past chiefs of police suggests that that might be a little limiting given the fact that, in essence, the candidate is going to have to be a qualified policeman to begin with. Okay, yeah, Mary Jane. Well, I stand behind two years for the simple fact that uh, people get, will have a chance to get to know the man that's running. And the man will have a chance to uh, get to know the people, know how the city operates, know the layout of the city. I don't think two years is too long. And, and I'm not arguing for one over the other. I'm bringing up the uh, I'm bringing up the pros and cons that were presented to me by the people I asked for. Um, uh, Mary Jane is one of those. And, and that's one of the reasons I put the two years in there. Uh, one is consistent with the other positions the other elected positions, um, and uh, some would even would go to the opposite and argue that if you only have a regular year, then that's a short span of preparation to come and get a job. Right, which is what Mary Jane was kind of pointing to, I think. So, is there, yeah, Janet? I agree with Mary Jane. I think two years because I believe the chief of police is a very important part of this city and that people need to know exactly who they're voting for uh, and I don't think a year will give them that that information. Okay. Yes, Sandy? Um, the chief of police is an important position. but. It's really not any more important than the mayor or the board of aldermen. If you've got those at one, do we have those at one? No, no, no they're two. No. They're, two. They're, they're two, and that's why I rewrote my second and third draft have two in here, but simply for being consistent. I only bring up that I put a, put in the one, and when I changed it, um, 
the argument from the police chiefs came up that you may be limiting residents' choices that way. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments from this side? From this and side? and I, I mean, there's two ways to go about this. I think you agree. Well, I mean, I'd like to make sure that we got a consensus on the board. Is is there anybody really in opposition of two years? Because I mean, I can go either way, but I I'm kind of leaning to two years myself. Is there anybody else that would? So it sounds like a consensus of the uh, commission is that it would be two years. So let's leave it at two years and Ted, go ahead and keep re uh, reading. Two, no person shall be elected or appointed to the office of chief of police who is not a citizen of the United States or who is in arrears for any unpaid taxes or who is guilty of forfeiture or defalcation during the entirety of their term. That's, yeah, I would note that in that section that is consistent with other things that we wrote, except that I took out the word "city." Um, I felt, and, and that is, and that is my view. I'll admit that right up front. That I felt like if you're going to elect a police chief, and he owes taxes to any other government. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, are we writing this for an elected person? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it, it is elected. Well, you've got four appointed. Well, there is, there is, later on in here, there will be a, a means by which to appoint a temporary oh, so you can, okay. in the event that the office is okay, That's in place that says that up here. Okay. Now, after this session, the rest of these clearly are misnumbered because I made an insertion in here, and there's two twos, so bear with the minutia. Okay, uh, Lisa has a question then, Ted. Just randomly ask it. No. Um, <laughs> no, I just to reiterate the discussion we've had with the last thing about tax and paid taxes. How are we going to find out if they have any unpaid taxes other than city taxes? Uh, I'm, not, I'm still of the opinion that it's not the job of the charter or even the board really to do that. Okay. If it's discovered that, that that's the case later, then unqualified is unqualified. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay. Uh, the next item, which would be three, no person shall be elected chief of police who has been convicted of any felony in any state, convicted of any crime of moral turpitude in any court within the United States, or who has been denied a license as a police officer by any state's order commission with police officer standards or training. Pause here for expected criticism. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want me to mention Bigfoot, I can do that. I'm good though. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Compose yourself. I uh, you know, I think it's good, you know, honestly. You know, I you don't want somebody who has an issue. That's true. No, it's oh, yes, yeah, it is. In Washington State, if you are guilty of harassing big fish. I just can't hear Jason. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying I agree with the, the, the Fed here. I, I think that you don't want anyone that has any type of issues or concerns in another state or municipality from here. All right. Seeing no other. The next item would be no person shall be elected chief of police who is unable to meet the licensing requirements for a peace officer of a county of the first classification as set forth in the Missouri Revised Statutes, Chapter 590. The next one is candidates for the chief of police shall possess a bachelor's or higher degree from an accredited college or university in a field reasonably related to public administration or criminal justice or demonstrate and equivalent combination of training and experience, which provides comparable knowledge, abilities, and skills. Okay, Lisa's got a question. Okay. Um, three and four, and the new numbering, I mean, um, I, I assume license requ licensing requirements for a peace officer are somehow different than licensing as a police officer? 
reserve, the staff is called a peace officer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and peace officer are kind of the first classification in particular came out of the statutes because Jackson County is that and the qualifications for a police officer here in St. Louis are different from the rest of the state. Okay. Is that why three and four are broken up as they are? Ish? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Um, Which three and four <clears throat> Sorry, three or who four. has been denied a license as a police officer, such and such, or... Um, I was just wondering why you didn't come oh, Who is the, unable to meet the license? The new three program. talks about any other state's board. Okay, thanks. Um, the uh, the reason I paused on number four there is I think we could get by with taking out the words chapter 590. That's where it resides now. But if, if, if right. that section read, no person shall be elected chief of police who is unable to meet the licensing requirements for a peace officer of a county of the first classification as set forth in the Missouri Revised Statutes. Yeah, that sounds good. Like that we're not holding it. Three for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. That sounds good to me. So, yes, Charlotte, go ahead. So when it talks about a county of the first classification, that's not a first class city? No. Okay, it's so a first class county. County. Right. Okay. All right, that's how my question is, because if we've got a charter, then we're not a first class. No, there's only two first class counties and we've been one. We, we still have to abide by the rules for a first class county okay. like in Peace Officer. Okay, excellent. Uh, number five, the candidates for... Oh, I'm sorry. Did you... oh, I have a question in five. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> candidates for the chief of police shall also possess... If you want to just jump in when I get there. Though. I will. <laughs> <laughs> shall also possess, one, considerable knowledge of the principles of modern police administration and police methods. Two, considerable knowledge of the principles and accepted good practices and procedures as applied to patrol, traffic control, criminal investigation, and crime prevention. Three, knowledge of the standards by which the quality of police service is evaluated and the use of police records and their application to police administration. Four, knowledge of the types and uses of the weapons, automotive equipment, and the equipment used for communications, personal safety, and digital information management in modern police work. Five, the functions of federal, state, and local jurisdictions and authorities as they relate to police work. And six, an ability to establish and maintain effective working relationships with other city officials, state, county, and federal authorities, civic leaders, and the general public. The only thing I have, Ted, is on number five, you left off knowledge of, you started with the word, uh, so. I started with the word. That's fine. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Okay. Just, I just to clear that up. Jay, uh, Jim, do you have something? Uh, yeah, I, I like all of this. I think this will work very well only if you hire or appoint your chief. But if you're going to elect him and he filed for office, I don't know how you could prove all those things ahead of time. As opposed to you, everything above one through four, you could. But when you get to these things here, you have to have an objective way of measuring those before you qualify to file for office. I agree with that, and I originally did not have them in there. Uh, I added them in there after. Uh, reviewing the only other charter I could find that had those descriptions in it. And I added them in there after the thought that, okay, these are the things that we would like to see. Right. And, and in the event that you do not, or you show you cannot possess those things, and now you're in a condition for a Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you can make an argument for removal. Well, whichever way we go, it has to be determined whether or not we're going to elect or indeed hire. This whole session is written to elect. To elect. Okay. Then, in order to elect, you have to have an objective way to determine whether or not they meet those qualifications before they get you off or off. I agree. So, I don't know. I, I would probably. I didn't want to be thinking on that when I first read that. I think it's the candidate's burden to, to prove those things in election time. Yeah, right. And, and failing to do that, even if it's true that they have been failing to prove it, I, I think it costs them an election. 
and I, I got the report for lifting those people. Um, that being is that I thought I would agree with you, but I'm going to invite them. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay, just, just to clarify, this is actually number six, not number five, because we have. Because I have the number here. Right. But okay. I mean, I understood what he was talking about. And, and I see the point, and, and originally I said no. Um, I, I think the reason that I put it in there is I think that, I think that A, we need to have the discussion to decide what to put in there. And, and B, I think if you, since Belton, my understanding is they pretty much had solved this problem on their own. And it appears that they're, they're walking down the path of saying these are the things we must do. Whether or not they would lose the most of that, I don't know. I think it's a decent statement of what we want to see. Okay, Lisa has a question, and then we'll get back on this way, and then Mary Jane, I haven't forgotten you. Okay. Since it was uh, basically brought up, who would be judging these qualifications, essentially? Um, is there, and then Ted, you mentioned it would be the burden of the officer running for the position. Is Should we write in there a section of the officer has to prove these things? I mean, at least, and to whom that way it seems a little more... It seems more specific than sort of a generic, vague... Um, well, my, my question would be, too, though, uh, as they have to file for the position, can we not make it part of the filing requirements that they at least sign something that says that they possess these qualifications? Well, I think you can, I think you can do that, but I think Jim's point is who's going to be the objective reviewer of whether or not your knowledge is considerable of those principles. Um, because two of those sections require considerable knowledge, right. whereas just knowledge is required of some of the others. I, I'm not, I mean, I see the argument, but, but it's there for us to decide whether or not it should be in there or not. And Mary Jane, your, your question goes back to five or is it on six? It's um, where it says um, it's on five. Okay. It says, Can candidate for the chief of police shall possess a bachelor's or higher degree from an accredited college or university in a field recent. recent reasonably related to public administration or criminal justice. Does that mean they can go to like ITT and get a degree in criminal justice and be qualified to be chief of police? If it's an accredited university, yes. Okay. Okay. And, and again, you're right, that's five. I was hoping we'd finish up with okay. six and well, then go back to you. But I, I just have another comment here. We're talking about making this an elected position. I think we ought to throw it out um, and discuss it. What about um, an appointed chief of police? I called a lot of the cities around here today and they all have appointed chief of police. Yeah, I know that seems to be like kind of saying the, the standard rule uh, around our community because all we found was Dalton that actually had an elected position. So, uh, well, sure, sure, the does and, and there are, there are others Excuse the Duke, but they're not part of you. Right. At this time. The ones I call like the hard choice. Okay. I have two more questions. All right. Um, Jason and then Susan. Um, well, first, I mean, uh, okay. Um, on six, to me, I look at this as a job description. It's what this is. I, I like it being included. Earlier, we mentioned who's the objective reviewer? It's the voters. They're the objective reviewer. I mean, this creates public accountability, having this in here, that this is what the expectations are of a police chief. And so we can have a removal process in there somehow in case they're not meeting that public accountability. But in my mind, when I see these six <laughs> items here, the objective reviewer is the voters. Hypothetically, if this passes where the voters elect the police chief, they're going to be the ones that are objectively reviewing this individual and in addition to the job description so anyone applying or considering to be a police chief just also shows hey look this is also some line items here like what your responsibilities are what your duties are and you know what maybe you'll be able to discourage people by having this in here maybe i shouldn't apply for it if i'm not exactly you know up to the challenge or have the experience or you know temperament to do such uh, being said, back on the other point, I, I, I am a firm believer of, um, 
an elected police chief. I I like the concept that that we, we have a voter choice on that. And again, uh, I'm gonna say this again. I, I think that in terms of my views to be up here uh, on this commission, I don't want to take any choice away uh, from the voters. I, I would like to encourage more voter autonomy, and, and that's why I do support that our police chief is elected. Okay, Susan, and then Mary Jane. I also like the idea of an elected police chief. Excuse me. I fear that, although I like the outline of the, uh, the knowledge that uh, Chief of Police Shop possess, <clears throat> the it, I fear that uh, it's a little ambiguous. Uh, as someone else mentioned, how do you measure a man's knowledge in that way? And the word <clears throat> shall in the opening sentence um, seems to imply that there may be a consequence for not possessing the specific knowledge. Um, and certainly there is. But it's just how do you measure that knowledge that concerns me? And, and if Mary Jane, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to speak into that just a little bit. If I'm running, if I was somebody running for chief of police and I possess all these qualifications, I think that would be a platform that I'd be running on. So, I mean, it would already be out there in front of the, the people. So I'm okay with uh, trying to identify some areas that, you know, the voters have a chance to look at specific uh, considerations that the chief of police would have to meet. And, and so that's just my thoughts So Mary Jane. Oh. Well, I was going to say, with an elected chief of police, um, I don't think in the 42 years I've lived here, I've ever had anybody that was running for chief of police come to my door and tell me why I should vote for him. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's ever been two of them that have ran uh, to yeah. oppositions. There's always been just one person running. And to me, it kind of seems like it's a popularity contest. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm, prob I'm probably going to get these two policemen mad at me, and I'm going to get a ticket before I ever leave the parking lot tonight. I'm <laughs> no, you won't. I'm, I'm going to speak my mind. You know? I'm going the way you're not going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to lose my neighbor. <laughs> the other one lives on the other side of the highway, so I don't stand a chance. All right. I'm going to go to Mike, and then to Lisa, and then to Mark. Okay. I want to get on the list, too. Okay. I'll make several statements here. Sorry. The elected chief past time when people have written charters, it was well known by the people on the Charter Commission, from what I understand, that people wanted it to be left as an elected position. As Jason says, the people could decide who they wanted to elect as their chief of police or marshal. Uh, being a policeman for a long time, listening to uh, people talk about and how things have gone around in the state after they made them appointed in a lot of smaller towns. The outcome hasn't been too good because they've gone through chief very quickly, it appears, which doesn't do the department very good. Um, the people I've talked to have all said that they want to stay elected. They want their say so about who they have to chief. And there have been a lot of races where there have been sometimes two or three people that are running chief at the same time. I'm going to keep my door. Yeah, I'm just saying that, that, that there are times when there have been two or three, four people. I don't have to have my door. Right. Okay. Uh, but that, that's, that's what I've heard is people want to be elected. They want their say so, just like with a lot of the other things that was started. And the other thing is being law enforcement. I've heard a lot of times when some of these other places have gone to point that they've ended up not getting what they thought they were going to get. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to Lisa and then Mark and then Jim. Now. Regarding the knowledge of sections, I, I think they go back to, for instance, their city administrator and city clerk always say, always say their eligibility. They shall, have the, shall be appointed on the basis of their qualifications. We don't necessarily judge them and have them take a written test, so unless we want to get detailed on each one. I mean, I, I see the benefits of having them display that they know how to use firearms and whatnot, but 
I, I guess it would be cons um, what's the word? Consistent, yes. It is the consensus. I can cut it out. Like I say, this is an addition that well, we made after. I think after it sounds the... good to me. I mean, I, I like the idea of the fact that they're not just walking in blind, but uh, I, I don't know if it hurts anything to leave it in. You know what I mean? Um, and as somebody said, it could be used as a platform when they're running for, for that. But um, the other two little minor questions I had were. Um, on what the new five is, when it says accredited college or university, I assume what university in our case. Otherwise, we'd capitalize. Again, that's a cut and paste. Right, I'm just, I'm just making sure. And, um, and on 6-6, six, six, um, when it says other city officials, are we talking about our city or different cities? Because I didn't know whether capitalized city or not. Okay. Okay. Yeah, then it would be small. Okay, Jim, and then Mary Jane. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I think Mark. Mark is. Yeah. You're right. Um, I just want to kind of follow what Mary was saying because I kind of agree with her. It, it, you know, it, again, but the public is. I agree. The public has to vote. <laughs> but I, how do we? How do you differentiate from an elected official? Politician, anyone elected is a politician. So that that's something that I don't know how uh, the public can differentiate. Uh, they, they maybe they get themselves in a lot of trouble over that. But I, I can see where someone would be appointed as chief of police as they work their way up through the ranks, as these gentlemen have. And you know, you're there, you know what the, what these men are capable of. And I think we don't have a whole lot of selection here in Raytown, uh, so their uh, resume would speak for itself. Okay. Jim? Well, Ted, first of all, I do agree with you that these are things that are truly, truly important that you want in your chief of police. Um, the key thing that I, I focus on here is that, that you're, you're using the term eligibility in the election term. And first of all, to be objective is not something that's observable, but rather it is measurable. You have to be able to measure. Uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with high school tests, any test, it's got A, B, C, or D, true or false. And you have a score, and you can measure it, you can, it is or it is. Um, none of these things, unless you have a way of measuring it, is something you can determine that a person is eligible to file for office. So, um, it could be included, though, under maybe um, the, the job description. In another session, possibly. Uh, but as far as making eligible the policy office to be elected, it's not possible. Unless you come up with some test that you can make it work. Now, I do think it's important how long the test that these are things that you'd like to see to be sure of in your chief of police. And what, what you could do is that you could create, if you put that in a job description, you could create an oversight commission of um, elected officials and citizens to serve as a uh, like a commission, um, for example, uh, the Jackson County um, judges have a, a commissioner. Uh, they have a commission that oversees um, all the judges in the courts in Jackson County. Um, so we can create uh, within our, our, our charter such a commission uh, of appointing elected officials and citizens that could serve. Uh, of oversight to be sure that all these things are being met by the, the chief of police. Um, that way that you, you can still elect your, your chief and at the same time be sure that he's meeting all these qualifications. And I think it also provides a good medium by which the public uh, can go to the commissioner um, and make an appeal or, or complain or whatever if they had to do that. I don't think we have that now, but I'm just pointing these thoughts out as, as possibility. Mary Jane. Okay, I'm going to ask a question, and maybe you guys can answer it, because I asked my husband, and he said, don't ask me, ask the guys who know. So, okay, here goes. Who does the chief of police report to? Voters. Pardon me? Voters. Voters. 
You mean yeah. now, today, right? Right now. There was a problem down in the, in the department, a big stir. Uh, nobody would know about it except the police department, right? Uh, probably not. Because if, if somebody in the police department, in, in their capacity, created a liability for the city as a whole, the city has to defend against it. There's no way an elected police chief could, could hide that. Um, if one of us, if I were to go out on a car stop and I were to assault somebody or, or some other way, shape, or form, abuse them, um, the city's liable for that. Um, because of my office, they gave, I am a police officer, and whether it's the chief that said that's okay or the city that said that's okay, the city's the one that's on the hook. So, the chief is answerable because I worked that department. He set the rules. He selected the employees. But in the end, the city has to the city has to defend itself for the way the police department conducts its business. Okay, if we had an appointed chief of police, why couldn't you have a police board? If you like a government that way, you obviously can have a police board. Um, you could write it into a charter. The city council could decide they were going to do it. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Um, the, uh, the idea about whether or not a police chief should be elected or appointed, I think, is one of choice here in a town this size. Um, and when we've discussed it in the past, my feeling is that I think it's what people here want. And as a policeman, from a professional standpoint, I think the advantage that it's given to Raytown in past years has been an autonomy by the police chief that's allowed them to set standards that, at least in my career, have been lucky enough to have been reasonably high. But that's not guaranteed by having an elected police chief. It can certainly go the other way. Okay, here's, a, here's another question I have. You come to the city for your money, for your budget, but you're not under the authority, so to speak, of the city. You're under the authority of your chief of police, right? Uh, yeah, I'm still subject to the personnel rules. Personnel rules of the city. The chief can't take those away. He can have two of them. I have that additional rules I have to, I have to apply by. But he can't change the ones that the city sets for all city employees. But the chief of police reports to no one on the city level. Am I correct in that? Um, yes. I, I think he, he, he participates with the city government, but he's not the whole of the city government. I think the, uh, I think the arguments in the past have been, in fact, uh, I know there have been arguments that the city administrator could feel constrained by the fact that have no control over the police chief. Um, in fact, I've heard it in the past. Well, all these cities I call today that have an appointed chief of police, the chief of police reports to the city administrator, he appoints to the, he reports to the mayor, he reports to the board of aldermen. He has some level of authority above him, which we don't have here. I think that's correct. Well, well unless, unless you don't consider the voters that way. Okay, that's okay. I got my answers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jason. I, uh, Matt, I can't. The one thing I think I have to share, though, is that if a chief is appointed, not that this is going to happen anyway, but that when political winds change, if you will, that certain things will be done with political influence that may not be in the best situation under the board. And that really is my concern uh, with an appointed position. Now, I'm not saying that can't happen without an appointed position, but I think the likelihood that that influence that may be contrary to what a police performance goals should be uh, could take place with, with an appointed position. I think the likelihood of that uh, is expanded. And 
Susan. I have to agree with uh, Jason that it's, it's a concern to me that there may rest um, the possibility of some undue influence on an appointed police chief. I'm, I'm very comfortable with the idea of an elected one. All right. Um, so, I'm sorry, Sandy. Um, I was thinking about what Jim was saying earlier. When somebody files for office, they're required to prove that they pay their taxes and all this other stuff. And if this is part of what is going to be required by a chief of police who's going to run, someone who's going to run as a chief of police, that person when he files with the city should be given this and if he, and then be able to approve it just like we do when we have to sign all that stuff. I think that's kind of what I was saying too earlier. I mean, why can't you just put it as part of the election process? Right. Well, personally, I mean, I'll go back to the fact that um, when we all ran for our position and everything like that, we, we, I think uh, we were trying to keep, uh, I don't want to say status quo, but as much of what is our current city government intact. Uh, and, and so I, I'm, I'm really uh, on the side of the elected position. Um, my question would be, uh, is it possible, even if he's elected, uh, just like uh, the uh, rural aldermen have to be responsive to their, their own selves, the mayor has to be responsive to it. Could we not put something in there that uh, the chief of police needs to uh, coordinate the efforts of the city or something like that with the board of aldermen? I mean, is that something, Ted, that uh, would cause some disruption. But I, because I can see Mary Jane's point too. I mean, how, who does he answer to? And well, wouldn't that be kind of arbitrary? I mean, if, if there's a major emergency, say there's a giant riot and that Walmart is being ransacked and so forth, I really wish it would. But anyway, that uh, and so <laughs> the chief of police would be the would be the the immediate. The immediate NCYC on the scene, and then of course the mayor would be talking to him, hey, how's it going, what are we doing, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't see where he'd say, Mary, you're in charge, so what do we do? Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like the, uh, the second lieutenant leading uh, well, and I, and charge I would, up the hill when he's never had any battle. And I don't think we need to take his responsibilities away. I just think he needs to work in a coordinated effort with the Board of, all, yeah. board of Aldermen. So, I mean, when an incident like that might arise, I mean, he's need to, he needs to do his job. Yeah, he would be there anyway. So, yeah. I mean, and that's a good point. So I'm asking you two guys what you might think. I think greater interviews. Yeah. It does describe that they have responsibilities to the board. Okay. They, they can operate the department, first off, without a budget. And as we discussed, you and I discussed last night, mm -hmm. budget's not just about money. It's about planning. The board of all does not approve directions. This city's going to send it back. We have to come up with another plan. Um, so I think the duties later on if you're described will we'll cover that. Um, and the, and the uh, second part of that, in the event of something catastrophic happened, um, other than the fact that the, that the chief here now is the emergency preparedness director, even under those conditions, it's the mayor who is the one that's going to be held accountable by the state, by, by the state for management of that crisis, whether it's a a riot or an ice storm or whatever, when it gets really bad and you have to ask for help, um, the mayor's the one that's going to be a boss of whether your police chief's elected or not. All right. I think the voter mentioned that the mayor's actually accessing that very. I think it's statutorily. I'm thinking of that. 
All right. I mean, this is a great discussion. I learned a lot myself. But Jim, do you have something? Yeah, I do. Um, First of all, I, I can't go back to what I said before. I, I think that the concept of the elected chief makes sense because it's been traditional. I really see it having knocked on doors a lot of times. Um, so most people are comfortable with that. Um, I, a couple of things that I want to mention to the rest of the board is number uh, one is in the eligibility for office, you have to have a degree from college. But it doesn't have to have been a graduate of the police academy, which means that he's going to be serving as a primary administrator over people who that's their that's the precise thing they have to have to be in that job. And and uh, so I think it boils down to two things that I think that are I. I kind of hear from the other members of the committee, and one would be an example of policy. Um, we don't often, even as a board, ever discuss police policy. Um, and I'm just going to give an example, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but the demands of the police department to maintain the safety of the city are great. I mean, it's not just a few things. For example, Every time and I've been an alderman that's done this, who requested that we put up stop signs inside neighborhoods, um, at the request of our constituents, because the constituents said, hey, we had a kid killed on the street, we'd like to have a stop sign. Then the question is, are we going to enforce the stop sign? And that's sort of policy. It was like, well, there's no question about that. Well, that's not true, because how we enforce the law uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and if we enforce it and, and, and how we enforce it, there's really a policy set by the police department. For example, uh, I was told once by a, a chief, and I, we, I've served 16 years to be one, one chief, so, um, three actually, who said, we don't, we don't enforce stop signs inside neighborhoods. We just don't have the, the, that size of force that we can do that. Uh, where we, we have citizens that say, hey, listen, cars are racing by here, it's dangerous, we want you to uh, at least occasionally um, post a place in there and get tickets out. And policy would say, no, we don't do that. And this is the policy determined by the chief. He makes that policy, only he makes that policy, and he answers to nobody. Even though the citizens may be the man that sits in our neighborhood, we have a sign there that the law says, and he may say, say, no, we're not, not going to do it. And that's his problem. Because he is a chief. Um, and so, <laughs> another one would be, you know, do we require um, the police department to do occasional drive through the neighborhood? Again, the policy is that the chief, and that's his job. Whether they do that at all, or how much they do that, it's only his responsibility to answer to nobody. Even though the citizens might be saying, we want to think police in our neighborhood more. And there's no bridge between the chief and the constituents who have elected him. And I've never heard of a constituent that said, I felt like I had any leverage over the police department. And that's what I'm hearing a little bit that says, you know, at least we should have the ability to question or policy that I'm talking about here. So, um, and again, I'll go back to what I said, that the big job maintaining all the laws of the state and the city was inside the city. Um, one of the things I want to get, some cities use the police department even to serve tickets for violations of codes, and we don't do that. But some cities do that. Um, so, so, I guess I'll make it just good at least to think about <coughs> between the next, excuse me, tonight and next meeting, is that we could uh, stop, stop, stop with the four, I mean five, or five, I mean four, as requirement to be eligible for office. I'm sorry, but A to four. This is actually five, because there's P2. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, okay. That's five. I'm reading the numerals here, okay? So that's five. 
Okay, again, so I don't think the wheel is stuck there, there and where, where it says number five, five um, you, you could you could, could think that as a say the chief police will demonstrate, demonstrate um, all these things below. And then we would be made of eligibility. I was about to propose that we if we just try five and six, we number seven, five. Is there a reason to have everybody really drop in five? But there's, but you've also left a alternative in there for, or demonstrate an equivalent combination of. So there are alternatives. There's an option there. Or all of them. Commission or board um, to, make to make sure, sure that the chief is demonstrating these uh, these requirements. It's just a thought. Okay. If you have a commission like that, how would you evaluate? I mean, you know, it's, it's like you said, you know, you got the checklist. Are they considerable knowledge of principles and all that? How are you going to measure that? I mean. And even if you go candidates to the chief of police shall demonstrate and you have one through six there. Well, I don't think that I don't think that has to be measured. I just what I'm saying is that you're you're holding at least there is in the time of crisis or emergency, or even for example, in other major type of events that we've recently had. If there were questions were arisen that the the the, the, the role was during that time, we would have something to fall back on to ask questions to. At least there would be someone held accountable, that's all. Part, part of my part of my thought is, is striking is if if we get through if we get through A with the with the uh, five that I presume are acceptable, if somebody feels strongly about point two, then we can then um, I I'm I'm not married to do a bond. I believe, I, I, I believe that, that the residents rate I want to elect their voice to. I have no intention to pass a judgment on that one way or the other. I've worked under those conditions for 34 years. Um, and and I've, I've had opinions pro and con for both. As far as writing a charter, I think it's what folks want. That's the reason I went ahead and looked for a way to create that. Okay, great. One, one last comment, Janet, and then we need to make a decision move on. I was going to make a motion. May I? I think we've had enough discussion. Okay. I make a motion that we accept it as renumbered, uh, the eligibility for office of room number seven, uh, striking out uh, the chapter 560 and also in number three services, the R, uh, R strike, uh, struck out because is is there. I'm sorry, I'm totally confused now. I think you need to have me okay. move before you try to move in from earlier. There's a place where it says is R, and striking R, striking out chapter number 590. Yes, yes, and number six, uh, the city there should be capitalized. Added in uh, an extra uh, city and city. One capital, one lowercase. So our city, one other city. city. I don't understand. Okay. okay. Well, I suggested to Willis if we put in 
and abilities to establish and maintain effective working relationships with other city, capital, and city, lowercase. I don't know, I just covered all the bases, and she covered all the other bases. And I was, I reread it, and I thought it was still a little bit confusing. I reread it, so that's all. All right. Whatever. Well, I think, Lisa, by keeping it a small C, you're basically including all cities. Yeah, no, it was yeah. confusing still the second time. Okay, around. the only one. One other correction. Okay, I'm, I'm still missing the second correction. Okay, the second one is number three. Okay. The, the uh, letter uh, number three. Uh, down here, knowledge of the standards by which the quality of police service is evalu evaluated. There's an R is. Okay. 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 Take that out. And then chapter okay. 590, and your third one then? Okay, and my last one is number five. Um, criminal justice or demonstrate an instead of uh, the D on the end of that, that should be taken off, an equivalent combination. University is lowercase. And university is lowercase. Yeah, right. And membership should be equal to the singular cities. Knowledge of the standards of the quality of the police is evaluated. No, because it's connected to it's other city. Uh, other city officials is what is that? Okay, officials is plural. So, all right, we do have a motion then with those minor uh, corrections. Uh, what does it include then? I'm not sure. She's, she, uh, Janet has actually made a motion to approve all the way through seven. Okay, as it is with the minor corrections that she's made. Okay, there, I mean, she can make a motion to that. It's whether or not it becomes seconded and then uh, it's voted on. Okay, so there is a motion. I'll read it again. All right. Uh, Mike is seconded. Who motioned? Uh, Janet motioned. Okay. Michael seconded. And if you want to reread it with all the minor corrections. Uh, are we all good? Do we need it reread? Reread it. Okay. I will. 6.1. Alright. Stop me if I'm incorrect. 6.1, eligibility of election and term. A, eligibility for office. One, candidates for chief of police shall have established primary, primary residency in the city for at least two years immediately preceding the election. The chief of police shall be qualified, a qualified voter of the city and shall remain a primary resident and qualified voter of the city during the entirety of their term. Two, no person shall be elected or appointed to the office of chief of police who is not a citizen of the United States or who is in arrears for any unpaid taxes or who is guilty of forfeiture or defecation during the entirety of their term. Three, no person shall be elected chief of police who has been convicted of any felony in any state, convicted of any crime or criminal turpitude in any court within the United States, or who has been denied a license as a police officer by any state's board or commission of police officer standards or training. Four, no person shall be elected chief of police who is unable to meet the licensing requirements for a police officer of a county of the first classification set forth as set forth in the Missouri Revised Statutes. Five, candidates for the chief of police shall possess a bachelor's or higher degree from an accredited college or university in a field reasonably related to public administration or criminal justice or demonstrate an equivalent combination of training and ex experience which provides comparable knowledge, abilities, and skills. Six, candidates for the chief of police shall also possess, one, considerable knowledge of the principles of modern police administration and police methods, and I'm putting semicolons on the end of these um, to match the rest of the document. Two, considerable knowledge of the principles and accepted good practices and procedures as applied to control, traffic control, criminal investigation, and crime prevention. Three, knowledge of the standards by which the quality of police service is evaluated and the use of police records and their application to police administration. Four, Knowledge of the types and uses of the weapons, automotive equipment, and the equipment used for communications, personal safety, and digital information management in modern police work. Five, knowledge of the functions of federal, state, and local jurisdictions and authorities as they relate to police work. And six, 
and the goal is to establish and maintain effective working relationships with other city officials, state, county, and federal authorities, civic leaders, and the general public. And the next one, seven. The chief of police shall maintain these conditions of eligibility throughout their term of office, or shall forfeit that office. Okay, it's been motioned, seconded, reread with corrections. Any additional discussion will allow one comment per person, and then we will vote. Yes, Jim. I guess my question would be if they think Mark. Um, file for this office to be elected, and I went up to the city hall and said, I don't think he's eligible because I'm, he does not have the knowledge of the standards by which the quality of police service uh, are evaluated, and the use of police records, he's never been in the police force before, and this application of police administration, um, he's not qualified. How would the court determine whether or not he was or not qualified? Because that objection would be made to the court, not to him or to the city. How would that be determined? I think Jason might have an answer. Well, I think this section here will talk about having appropriate training and such. I mean, obviously, you don't have a degree. And that's not really my question. I think section 5 kind of highlights that in terms of. Section six. Any other comments from this side? All right, we have a motion. Oh, Charlotte. comments we'll take a vote on this Lisa please
motion carries in for uh, section A uh, by vote of nine to three. Uh, it is right now approximately nine minutes till. Ted, do you think we can get through the training part of it since it's pretty straightforward in five minutes? The training requirements. Number one, any person who is elected to their first term as chief of police shall within six months of such election also to file with the city clerk proof that they have successfully completed the certification requirements pursuant to the very revised statutes. Striking out chapter 590 again. Okay. Chief of police will maintain a current police officer license and is required to be a police officer in the county of first classification including all of the required continuing education. And C, election and term by the regular municipal election two years following the election of the mayor. The chief of police shall be elected by the qualified voters of the city at large to serve a four year term. I make a motion that we approve. Second. Any discussion? All right, we'll take a vote. Jefferson. Yes. Steve Gunther. Yes. Yes. Susan Anderson. Yes. Yes. Michael McDonough. Yes. Ted Bowman. Yes. Jim Yes. Susan Bowman. Yes. Jason Bowman. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. Jason Green. Yes. Sandra Hartwell. Yes. 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 Yes.
Please keep all of the documents that we have not voted on so I don't have to reprint them next time. Correct.